The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. My name is Nekumo Elvis, teacher of electricity, teacher of GTTTC. Today, we continue with our lessons, lesson number seven. And before we continue with our lesson, we, it's good that we should look at the assignment that we get before today, last time, before we separated. So we have assignment and the assignment is given like this. The following incomplete power circuit diagram is the one of a direct current injection breaking of a ring motor one direction of rotation used in the ruling carpet system. Reproduce and complete this diagram. Look at the diagram, the incomplete diagram, and we are asked to complete this diagram. First thing, let's look at the elements of diagram. What is lacking on this diagram? So when we look at this power diagram, and this, the topic is talking about injection, current injection breaking. That is to break the motor by injecting a DC current. First, we first of all look at the elements that are lacking in this particular diagram. What is lacking? To inject a DC current, we need to convert it. So we need a transformer. We need conductors. So these are the elements that are lacking in this particular diagram. Or oh, if we insert this element, we put those elements together and we join them, we come out with this diagram. So we have here our diagram, power diagram of current injection breaking. So if you remember very well last time, we explained. So here we have our conductor KM1, we have KM2, and here we have transformer. So we have to convert, we convert to transform, to step down the transformer and we have our rectification circuit so that we convert from AC to DC. The transformer is there, we first of all step down. We step down the voltage to a particular value before we convert it, we rectify it from AC to DC, that's why have this symbol which is a rectification symbol so we have to rectify because we are going to inject the DC current to the motor circuit to stop the motor from functioning so now look at the function of the diagram if you look at the way between K1 and K2 we have this symbol I always tell you people this symbol is to is what we call mechanical interlock that prevent the the conductor KM1 and KM2 from functioning at the same time. So since two of them cannot function at the same time, we need that mechanical interlock. So when you press SK, when you start the motor with conductor KM1, the motor is running normally. Normally, and if you desire to stop, you have a desire to stop the motor, you stop it, and when you press, you stop contactor KM1 from functioning, the motor automatically KM2 will start and the current will be in DC current will be injected to the, C, the motor circuit. In that case, the motor will be completely stopped and the rotor is standing. Let's continue today with another lesson titled 
starting of two-speed motor, starting of two-speed motor simply winds one direction of rotation. So you remember, we can have two-speed motor. How can we operate with a two-speed motor? Because let's take example: if you have a drilling machine, this that's the type of motor that you can you can work with two with two speeds. I mean, with two speed, that means the high speed and the control speed. Let's look at how we can start this motor with two speeds. For us to understand the, our lesson very well, we must look at the objectives. Where are we looking for? Where are we going to? So that's the main, the main idea that we have. We have went somewhere. What do we need to understand? So this is our objective. At the end of this lesson, what should we understand? And for us to understand, we need to have certain knowledge. That's what we call prerequisite. And to understand if we have certain knowledge and we have some, we have an objective, we have a problem to solve. So that's why we are going to talk about the problem statement. And to stop our problem, we must pass through the learning activities, through the learning activities that we will be able to solve our problem. And the learning activity is always complete with an application. For that, at the end, in order for you to understand, to master the topic very well, we have to apply some gifts of us, exercise and solve according to what we have done. And at the end, you go home with an assignment. So for the objective, we say at the end of this particular lesson, you should be able to draw the power, the control, secret and the signaling of two-speed motor and explain the functioning of the power and control secret. If you are able to draw, you should also be able to explain the functioning because you cannot only draw, but you should be able also to, fun to explain the functioning of a secret. So that's what we should have in our mind for at the end. So for us to attain our objective, we must have this one as previous knowledge. What you know before? We know that we know we have knowledge about the electrical diagram, we have knowledge about coupling of the motor, we also have knowledge about start data, starting norms and symbol of component. Remember, we draw our diagrams, and because let's say you should be able to draw the diagram, the power, the control, and the the, and the signaling. And you cannot draw a diagram without knowing the symbol. So that's why. And the symbol has norm. So that's why you should know the norms and the symbol of components. My dear students, this is the problem presented before us, and we are going to solve it. Mr. Uh, when Mr. Owner supplies his drilling machine, he notices that it is not well functioning. To solve the problem, he calls you and you notice that the machine has two speeds. You have to rewire the power and the control circuit diagram of the drilling machine for it to function normally. So that's the problem presented before us. So our problem here is to solve the problem of Mr. Owner. So we have to rewire the machine, to rewire the power, the control, so that the machine should function very well. So let's continue and see at the end, we note from our learning object our activities. During this activity, at the end, we know that we can be able to solve, or we should be able to solve this Owner problem. So generalities on two-speed motor, separate windings. So let's look at the generality. From the generality, we can we, we go, we proceed. The presentation of the terminal plate, presentation of terminal plate of the motor. So you have winding, separate windings. So the, there's no link between the two windings. The two windings are separate. So that's why we are talking about two speed motor, separate windings. That means the low speed has its own windings and the high speed has its own windings. So that's, these are the windings presented before us. Copy of the terminals. Look at how the terminal can be coupled separately. So you have the high speed terminals and the low speed terminals. So one direction, because our focus here is to 
study the one direction of rotation starting and passage from one speed to another by action on the push button. Starting by start, uh, one direction of rotation starting and passage from one speed to another by and by action on the push button stop. So it means that what? So before you start the motor, or if the motor was running in low in low speed, before you start the high speed, you have to stop the low speed before you start the high speed. That's what the topic is talking about. We have before us the power diagram. The power diagram, you notice that here we have our motor, we have one, one, this one on the one side. Here we level this one, the low speed, this one work as low speed, and this side is high speed. So you notice that we have, we also have this mechanical interlock here because a motor cannot work in the low speed and high speed at the same time because it's a motor so we don't have two motors there we are talking about the two speeds but with one motor one speed one speed one motor the motor will work in one speed or other speed but the motor cannot work with both speeds so one motor cannot be working simultaneously in high speed and low speed so firstly, the motor, we can decide to start our motor. For example, here we can decide to start our motor in low speed. When we are drilling, we can decide to start with high speed. So it depends on the operator, the person manipulating. If you are drilling a piece, you can start with the high speed. As the drilling process is going on, you reduce the motor work now in low speed. And while wiring, because we remember we were talking about the rewiring of Mr. Owana motor. So that while you're running, you take into consideration that you have two separate wiring. You wire the low speed separately from the high speed. That is why each, each level, for example, low speed has its own protecting device, thermal relay, and the high speed has its own protective device. So each level has its own protective device, protective, protective device. So at the low speed, you have the thermal relay to protect it against overload, and when the motor is working in high speed, you have another thermal relay to protect it against overload. Control diagram of the motor. So when we finish wiring the power, let's look at the control. Let's look at the control. On the power, notice that we said KM1 is for the low speed, and KM2 is for high speed. And two of them, each speed has its own protective thermal relay. So that's why you have F1 and F2. And you have a stop push button. And you also remember that we said at the beginning of this lesson that before you start the motor at low or high speed, you have to stop the speed that was going on. So for example, for instance, when the motor was running in high speed, before you move to the low speed, you have to stop the motor first. Or if the motor was moving in low speed, move to high speed, you also stop the low speed. So here we have KM1 for the low speed. So let's consider KM1 low speed side and KM2 um, high speed contactor. So by pressing S1, you energize the coil of contact of KM1 to start the motor in low speed. When you contact of KM1 energizes, it closes is not hold on contact KM11 and opens KM12. That's the electrical interlock so that the why contact of KM1 is working, contact of KM2 should not also start. So that's why we have these contacts to, for, so that the two should not work simultaneously. So at the, means at the same time. Now you have high speed side. Before you start the high speed side, you, you press on S0 to stop the motor, the, the low speed, before you start the high speed. You start the motor in high speed, means you press 
on S2, you energize the contact on Km2, and if closest is normally open contact Km21, this is the whole on contact, and opening the contactor Km22. So that's the electrical interlock. So what we have to notice here, what we must take home here as note is that before you start a particular speed, you should make sure that you stop the other speed. So if the motor was working in high speed, you stop it before you start the motor in low speed. In the other hand, if the motor was working in low speed, you should stop it, the low speed running before you start the motor in high speed. Let's continue our with one direction and passage from one speed to another without stop. So we said before you start the other one, you stop. And before you, you stop the other one, before you start the low speed, you start you stop the high speed. Or before you start the high speed, you stop the low speed. But yeah, look at let's look at the situation where you can start while stopping the low speed or while stopping a particular speed, you switch automatically to the other speed. So that's why we say one direction of rotation is starting and passes from one speed to another without stop. So let's look at the situation where you can start a speed without stopping, without pressing a stop push button. So that while stopping automatically, you are while starting a particular speed. Automatically, you are stopping the other speed. So that's what we have. And also, look at the power diagram. The power diagram remains the same as the other side. The power diagram remains the same as previously said. So you have two separate windings. One control separately with thermal relay. The other one is also controlled, uh, protected separately by another thermal Relate. So we have the same power diagram. The problem now is at the level of the control. How should we, how are we going to control this motor so that we should not be pressing the stop push button before starting the order or why the motor is working in the order speed. We have a diagram here. For us to operate this system very well, we need a push button with a normally Normally, with two contacts, we need a push button with two contacts. One normally close and the other one normally open. For instance, when you have this S1, you see this one is the normally close contact of S1. And here is the normal, that's the normally, sorry, that's the normally open contact of S1. And here you have the normally close contact of S1. One. The same, the same way, you have the normally open contact of S2 here, and here you have the normally close contact of S2. Okay, why wiring this particular diagram? Let's say you are going to start your motor in low speed. To start your motor in low speed, after that you switch to high speed. You, an action on push button S1 will start to energize the contactor KM1. When you energize the contactor KM1, automatically you are putting off KM2 if it was working through this normally close contact. So if KM2 was on through this KM11, as you are putting on this KM1, Automatically, you open this secret. So, you don't need to go and press the stop push button before you come and start the other side. So, if you want to start your motor in low speed, why? Meanwhile, the high speed was on. Automatically, as you are pressing a push button, automatically you open the secret of another a speed. So, in the same way, if the, our motor was working in low speed, that means that means the contactor KM1 was on through KM1, KM11, the whole on contact. Automatically, as you are pressing S2, you stop, you open the circuit so that you will stop KM2. 
to and the motor start now in the high speed. So that's how we can start our motor where we can pass from a particular speed to the other without pressing the stop push button. So we can pass from the high speed to the low speed or to the low speed to high speed without pressing on the stop push button. My dear student, if we summarize what we have just learned today, we notice that we have, we can say that this starting method is efficient for two-speed machines. This starting method is efficient for two-speed machines. If the high speed is used to run the motor, the low speed will offer an important top in order to operate example to drill or a piece to drill a piece or to drill or to piece so now let me repeat this starting method is efficient for two speed motor so you must have two speed motor before you use this type of starting method if the high speed is used to run the motor so you start the motor you take example of the drilling machine so when you start a drilling machine, you will always not start the drilling machine, always move, run with high speed. When you start it at the beginning, you always run with high speed. As far as you start drilling or you start this is a, a, a part, you will notice that the speed will reduce. So the low speed will offer an important top in order to operate. So that's why when you are drilling, you need very strong which is very strong power. So that's why during drilling, the speed you are using is a low speed. When you are drilling, we need high torque. So the speed should be low speed because that's why they say the low speed will offer an, an important torque in order to operate. Let's look at this uh, as an exercise. Let's look at the exercise. The following in complete control circuit diagram is the one of a drilling machine used to make the growth of the wall. One sense of rotation, one direction of rotation in a built-in site of an electrical workshop. Redraw and complete this diagram. So let me read again. The following incomplete control circuit diagram is the one of a drilling machine used to make the groove on the wall one direction of rotation in a building site of an electrical workshop. So you need to do so now you have to repeat, you have to redraw and complete the following diagram. This is the incomplete diagram. We have the incomplete diagram. The first thing, as we always say, you should look at the element, what is lacking in this particular diagram. What is lacking? That's the first question. What is lacking? If you look at it very well, we notice that we don't have a place to start. We don't have protective device. We don't have thermal release. And we said for two speed, each speed has to be protected by a particular thermal relay. Let's look, let, let look at a KM1, which is the high speed or low speed. We, we have to put down its thermal relay. We have KM2, we have to put down its thermal relay. And the starting button, push button. So before we start, we must have a push button. So these are the elements that are lacking on in this particular diagram. So if we put those elements together, we put those elements together, you come out with a secret that will enable us to solve the problem of Mr. Owner. So at the end, we should always ask the question that after this lesson, should I be able to solve the problem presented to us before? Because Mr. Owner presented us a problem. So now by putting in place this element, because remember the problem posed by Mr. Owner was we have to rewire the two-speed motor in us. So by putting in place all the lucky elements and putting them together, we should be able to come out with this 
that you can control, that you can so that you can control the two-speed machine. Here we were talking about passing from one speed to the other without pressing the pull, the stop pull button. So now this one shows that we must press on the stop push button before passing from one speed to the other. If we, the motor is running in high speed, we have to stop it before moving to the other speed. Or if the motor was running in low speed, we have to stop it before we move to the other speed. So that is the diagram presented to us. So and if you have done it very well, you come out with this particular diagram. So that assignment help us in order for us to master what we have just learned and at the end we should be able to solve the problem presented to us by Mr. Owner. Assignment. So when you go home, you should follow this assignment, you take it and you do it at home and you verify just to verify your knowledge, the level of your knowledge at this particular lesson. So if you do it very well, you should be able to solve any problem presented to you concerning the two-speed motor. So the assignment is like this. The following incomplete power circuit diagram is the one of a drilling machine used to make the proof on the wall. One sense of rotation in building site of an electrical shop shop. Redraw and complete this diagram. So we have done the power diagram of this. Now we have the control diagram for us to complete at home so that at the end we should be able to solve any type of problem concerning two speed motor. So we should redraw the control circuit diagram of this particular one, so this incomplete diagram, and so that next time we are going to do the correction. So when you take this assignment, when you take this assignment, you should make sure that you do it alone, or you should do it, make sure that at the end you verify your knowledge. So that's what we have as assignment. So this is the diagram. You take down the diagram, take down the diagram, and you know the principle, you know how to come out with a particular diagram so that at the end you don't have any problem. So at the end, you master the topic very well. So at the in at home, we complete this particular diagram. So uh, before we come up with this, our lessons, you consult these books, this reference, so that you too you can go through and verify your own knowledge and make more research so that you should be able to solve more problems that will be presented to you. So you consult this particular books so that at the end you should be powerful, a good technician, so that at the end use any type of problem, electrical problem or motor presented to you be able to solve it without any problem. So our next lesson will be on the starting of two-speed motor separate winding forward and reverse. <laughs> Ona tege minga matege nyum Ona tege majang matege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen Ngani bana matege mut Ngani la kiri watege ndong Yeso kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninyane njubia yen 